Now, speaking of texture, in addition to these wonderful glazes being perfect for applying to a background and stamps or water, we can also add it with texture. So Ranger has had some very cool textural products in their line for a long time. And people that use a lot of Distress products use those other texture products. And in the end user game, there's a disconnect. You know, it's like I use Ranger Texture Paste with Distress this, and they're like, well, what is the paste you use with Distress? And it's like, well, it's the Ranger one. So Ranger is very good at kind of listening to uh, the people, right? Listening to the makers that use it, and whenever we recognize a disconnect, they're very cool about saying, okay, let's make sense. So I've introduced some new mediums, which aren't new in the sense of new to the industry, but new to Distress. So Texture Paste, both in matte and crackle, have been part of the Ranger line, and they still are but they're also part of the Distress line now. It's exactly the same product. I just chose to do mine in smaller jars because I think in today's mixed media world, yeah, people that want like big jars of stuff, it just dries out before you get a chance to use it all. I mean, unless you're a professional artist and that's all you do, it's just what it is. Because when you use a big jar, it's like, ooh, it's a better value. Is it? When you're throwing half of it away, is it? So that lower profile jar is just going to allow me to just, I think, use more and less air. So the texture paste, what makes it so unique is that it's a fluffy texture that when it dries is completely inkable, okay? You could tint it beforehand, you could certainly go in and mix it with a palette knife and re-inker or paint and you can make it a color, but I love this texture paste that when it dries, I could go with watercolor, oxide, spray stain, anything, and my color will soak into this the same way it would with paper. I could add my water flicks, I could do anything I want, and this is basically like paper. That's what I love about it. Crackle, for those of you that are crack challenged, this has been the best crackle product. We laugh because we are all crack challenged. <laughs> you know, there's been a lot of crackle products. There's been distressed crackle paint and crazing and rock candy, and it's like, oh, I can never get it to work. This one is foolproof. Like, the cool thing about a texture paste is when you put it on, it creates a nice crackle. It has a great adhesion property. The thicker the medium, the bigger the crack. The thinner the medium, the finer the crack. You can apply it with a palette knife, you can apply it with a brush, you can apply it with your finger. If you happen to go over to the Ideology booth, anytime during the show, I encourage you to do that and pick up any of those vignettes and see just little hints of crackle, it would be this. It's what everyone uses for their crackle, all right? It is an opaque crackle, so to add color, once it's done, you would go over with your inks, your Distress Crayon, your paint, and then you could add color over this crackle when it's done. The other thing that we introduced is grit paste. Now, I released Grit Paste, I don't even know when I released the first Grit Paste. It's been a couple years, probably a few years. Um, and Grit Paste is designed to have a gritty texture, okay? Perfect for snow, you could add glitter to it. It just creates a nice grungy look. But regular opaque Grit Paste is gesso-based, right? It's white, so when you put it on something, you get those white marks. If you try to put it around an edge, you get that, which is awesome if you're gonna ink or paint. But what if you wanna add that grit over something metal or something printed and you still wanna see the pattern underneath or the texture? So now we have translucent grit paste. It's the same texture, so you can do like feel vision Same gritty texture, but it is translucent. So now when I put it over metal, I can still see that metallic coming through. I can add my crayons, add my paint, and get all that gritty texture, but I don't have to worry about the opacity. There is a need for both. It depends on how we're gonna use it, but it is nice that we have that option to add. Okay, it never fails. I swear it never fails. She's quick though. I think someone must have told her because she is talking fast now. Yeah. This morning she was a little, yeah, she's a little calm. All right, see? I, someone told her. She got the memo. Yeah, that's sweet. All right, here's what I love about these textures texture and glaze. So here we have the this one. Just use a regular matte texture paste because it's white. Put it through a stencil. Then I took my glazes and while this paste is wet, take a little pinch of this color, a little pinch of that color, a little pinch of this color, and we did painting with powder, right? Meaning when I put this on, I did little colors. And when you paint with powder, the trick is to not put your powder and do this because it'll take whatever color is here and cover it. It's about putting the powders on and do the dance. So I'll show you that, I'll show you how cool that is too. Then we go in and emboss it. So I'm gonna grab a palette knife. I took one out, but I can't find it already. I'll take a stencil, same thing. Don't know where they are. I'll find them. All right, we're gonna do some paste. 
Let's see what kind of stencil I want. What did Ted give me? Ooh, bubbles. Ooh, tangled. They're all good. Ooh, circuit. Look at that. Ooh, mermaid. I don't know. He's just this crazy guy that loves to push the limits. So I'm like, how much detail can we cut in a stencil at one time? They do good though. All right, I'm gonna take a stencil. And I'm gonna take some paste. Now, of course, we could do this over an inked background, but I'm just gonna show you what it looks like over whatever I take out of my pile of good. That's a good one. Ooh, that'll be good. Be like molten bubbly. Yeah. Okay. So when we do some paste, when you work on the media mat, messy media, non-stick, right? Because it'll just wipe right off. Then you're just gonna place this down. Pick this up from the back, okay? Now, if you wanna tape things down, you can. I don't need to for this one, but I'm just gonna go from the back and I'm just gonna smear some of this through. It's kinda of wet, kinda of whipped creamy kinda of stuff. And you just wanna be able to see your stencil design before the dismount, right? You put too much on there, you pick this up, it's just gonna fall into your design, right? So we're just gonna take that. I'm gonna place this in water. I have just a little container of just disgusting water down there, but that's all it takes. We're gonna put this back. And your texture paste will thicken up, and that's okay. As long as it's not completely rock hard. If you have mediums that thicken up, I suggest using Distress Refresher, okay? It's a resin, so instead of adding water, because water will just evaporate, the same refresher I use on an ink pad, you can use for any water-based medium, right? So we can put it in our pastes, our paints, or anything like that. Just a little spray, stir it up, and it will pretty much come back to life. All right, so while this is wet, I'm gonna take a glaze. I'm gonna do a little bit of fire brick. Mmm, that's gonna be good. Kind of like a cooking show, right? <laughs> we use a little fossilized amber. So obviously once you do this, you kind of, you have a party mix, you know. So you can either save it or just, just chuck it in the name of art. Let's do some weathered wood. I don't know how well that's going to work, but we might get a little purpley vibe going on. All right. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do the dance. I'm not going to do it over the medium mat. I'll just do it over this wonderful carpet. But what I'm doing is I'm just going to start tapping underneath. Can you guys see that before I start doing it? Yeah, you guys got a shot. So all I'm going to do is just kind of create vibration. And that's what's going to start moving these powders around. Okay? And it's going to just give me just more of that random speckly look. Okay? Over scrap paper, garbage can, whatever. And what that does is that just takes that powder and just gives it more of that speckled look, right? So just that little bounce is what's popping those crystals and like blue is jumping over here and yellow is jumping over here. So you're not getting that line of color, okay? Then we're gonna emboss it. Now, you have some options on this one. If you choose to let it dry before you emboss it, you'll get pretty much an even glazed texture. So if you let this paste dry for, I would say about 10 minutes, okay? Then go in and emboss it. Your glaze will be fairly smooth. I mean, it'll be textured, but it's gonna be smooth on the top. If you do what I'm going to do, which is not wait, you're gonna see that this starts to get a little bubbly and molten. Perfect for this stencil, but that's how I did this one, so I wanna share that with you. So you have that option, okay? But just know that if you heat this while this is wet, it's gonna come alive, and we're okay with that. So same thing, we're just gonna start heating up. Mmm, this is gonna be good. Because it just gets kind of blistered. It's very, very upset. That's what I love. And this glaze is totally you see it sizzling? Oh my heck. Shut up. It's so good. It is. It's just this bubbly. And when those colors mix, I mean, that's what I can't even stand. Ooh, did you see it? Ooh, uh -huh. see that? Oh, I told you. It like comes alive and then it just like calms back down. You just think it's going to explode, but then it doesn't. It's awesome. I love it. But that's what's cool. I mean, my gosh, I've been... I've been stamping for like 20 years, you know, I'm, I, I can't believe I'm excited about embossing powder again. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like what goes around comes around, but I also think just different uses for it and different features of it. Uh, you guys see it getting all bubbly? See how I can bubble that up again? Oh man. That right there, that's just some good magic. And that's just ridiculous. Look at that. 
Shut up. It's like stone. Oh, yeah. It's awesome. It's just good. But you're getting all those little colorful, you know, dragon like this I would want to do over something. Dragon scales. Dragon scales. Dragon scales. That should be an ink color, yeah. let's just say. Oh. <laughs> right? Thank you. <laughs> yeah, there you go, Joy. Thank you, thank you. So the whole purpose of this one is the fact that now we've added glaze, something translucent, but we've given it such vivid color because we put it over something white, right? Mm -hmm. And that's what's bringing out this bright color, and that's what's also creating almost this airbrush look. Again, there's no ink other than the background, mm -hmm. but there's no ink to this. All my color is coming from a glaze. So when you start dealing in the world of translucent powder and mixing, you just become, I don't know, it's like your own your own crazy mad scientist. I'll pass this around, it should be cool. Yeah. I have to look away in case it sticks to your fingers. Yes, good. Thanks for watching. Be sure to give our video a thumbs up and subscribe to Sprout Time videos for all the Creativation 2020 coverage.